Whew, oh boy. 100 miles in the Hoka Speed Goat 5. So I thought today we'd take a look at those. Uh, it, check out some of the durability things, see how they're holding up, talk about the performance. I ran a lot of miles in these over the summer when I f first initially got them. But then I kind of set them aside a, a bit while I was training for the Detroit Marathon. But now the weather is such that it's a good time to pull them back off yeah, or pull them back <laughs> off my shelf and take them out for uh, you know run. I've had them out a couple of different times recently, which then rolled the odometer over to 100 miles on these. Uh, you know, it's a great trail shoe. I'll just tell you that right up front. But let's start and we'll talk about some of the stats of the shoe first, just because in case you haven't uh, seen any of the reviews of the shoe in the past, uh, let me bring you up to speed. So they cost 155 US dollars. I did purchase these with my own money, so there's no chance for bias here at all. As always, I try to give you my honest opinion. I ordered a US men's size nine and they fit me perfectly. I had no issues with the fit whatsoever. It is a neutral trail shoe. Now, I Hoka describes it as a workhorse of a trail shoe. Um, yeah, I agree with that. You know, I, I don't disagree with it for, for sure. Uh, you know, after 100 miles, they're still going pretty strong for me. So let's start and we'll talk about the midsole first and then we'll talk about the upper and all that kind of good stuff. And we'll, like I said, take a look at some of the durability things that can creep up over time with a pair of running shoes or in this case, a pair of trail shoes. So they still have their EVA compound that they're using for their midsole. So it's full EVA foam from the heel all the way to the toe. Now they do have a spring measurement that, that Hoka gives us and they printed it right on the side here. So they got 35 millimeters in the heel and 21 millimeters up in the forefoot of the shoe. And again, they're measuring the spring. Now, if you don't like that kind of a measurement, now they went to that a couple of years ago. Um, you know, it's a little bit harder to compare the midsole when you're using spring measurement instead of the actual stack height. But to the best of my knowledge, they have 33 millimeters in the heel and uh, 29 millimeters up in the forefoot. So they have a four millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. They have a late stage meta rocker. Now, Hulk has talked about meta rockers and a ton of their different shoes, but basically it's where the curvature starts. And, you know, an early stage would start a little bit before the metatarsal head. And then a late stage like these are more right about where that metatarsal head of your foot would, would fall, which gives it a nice smooth ride. And I think that's great for a trail shoe. I don't know that you need necessarily a super aggressive shoe, although I, I do like their Tecton X. I'll tell you that right now. Um, which is a really fun trail shoe for me to run in during the summer months. But honestly, I prefer these for this time of year. Now, I live in Michigan and the weather has turned cold. It's you know mid-January right now. We don't have any snow on the ground, which is really pleasant for us, but that's not going to last. We've, we've already had a couple of big snowstorms already. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about the Hoka Speed Go uh, 5 is that not only is it a really solid choice as a trail running shoe because it has a lot of cushion. Now, Hoka does describe it as a balanced cushioning, but for me, for other trail shoes that I've run on, they're falling more on the plush feeling. Um, so they work great for that. But they're also a really good winter running shoe. And when I've had some snow and the ice out on the roads, these are the shoes that I picked up recently to, to go out just around town. So even though it was pavement or sidewalks I was running on, because they had a little bit of snow, a little bit of ice, I found these to be a really good and comfortable choice for me to run in. So let's talk about how I've been using it um, and how that midsole is held up under the conditions that I've taken these out on. Mostly the trails that I run on are not super technical. There are a lot of hard packed, well-traveled trails in a state park, uh, but the state park doesn't start out with trails. Typically, I got to run on some paved roads to get to the trails. So as a road to trail shoe, I think it's a really good option. They're far more comfortable. This version of the Speedgoat 5 does a much better job of transitioning from the road to the trail than previous versions that I've run in. Now I've run in a lot of miles, run a lot of miles in the Speed Goat 3, and these are definitely a much improved version of that shoe. Even though I love the Speed Goat 3, these are better in my opinion. Now Hoka says that the midsole is lighter and more cushioned. Yeah, it is. It feels it. Um, you know, it especially has a lot of cushion for me up here in the forefoot of the shoe. Super comfortable to run in. And they come in, you know, they're not terribly heavy for a trail shoe. Now, Hoka has, I think, 
10.4 ounces as a stated weight on their website, but I'll check that out and make sure that that's correct. But that's not what they came in on my scales. They actually came in uh, a bit lighter than that. For US men's size nine on my scales, they came in at 9.8 ounces, which would be 277 grams, I believe. So for a trail shoe, not bad, you know, under 10 ounces. Um, you know, after a couple hours, they do start to feel a little bit heavy, but what shoe doesn't? So I'm, I'm not going to hold that against them. And as far as, you know, running on the trails themselves, I'm, you know, lots of muddy conditions. Um, they do pretty decent in the mud. You know, they've got five millimeter uh, lugs on the bottom of these. They've got their um, Vibram Mega Grip uh, outsole material that I think does a terrific job, especially on slightly wet conditions on pavement. Although I don't prefer necessarily to run these just on, uh, you know, naked pavement themselves. It does fine with that. But as a road to trail, if you're just going to transition, I think really good for that. Or like I said, if there's a little bit of snow or ice on the road. But the Viva, Viva Magra Grip, I think, does a really good job sticking to the pavement, even under some wet conditions. You know, the, the trails, lots of exposed roots. So having this toe cap up front is pretty nice. Uh, you know, especially when your legs start to get tired and you feel like you could trip over the thickness of a leaf sometimes because you're kind of getting that almost marathon shuffle going on um, when your legs get tired. So just having this extra protection up here, it's not a ton of extra protection, but it's enough there that should you kick a root or something along those lines, um, you're not going to feel it necessarily stubbing your toe. So I do appreciate that. Uh, the upper itself is a double jacquard mesh upper. I found it to be, you know, pretty breathable. Um, it's not it's not waterproof, but it is somewhat water repellent. And it's got enough breathability that if your feet were to get wet, they dry out pretty quickly. So I do enjoy that part of it. The tongue is pretty darn thin, uh, but I didn't have any issues feeling the laces cutting across the top of my foot at all. It is semi-gusseted, so I didn't feel it moving around. Um, found it to be fine, you know, pretty comfortable over the last 100 miles. Didn't have any issues with that at all. Uh, the lace enclosure system, pretty standard, with the exception of this e expansion panel or stretch panel down here in the toe box. I really like that. It, I feel like it's super comfortable. You know, I don't feel like, you know, my feet are getting crushed in up there at the toe box at all. I feel like I have plenty of room to be able to splay my toes. And I do like to do that, especially when I'm out trail running, going downhill. You know, you want to get those toes out there, give you a little bit of stability as you're running through the woods. Uh, so I found it to be super comfortable up there in the toe box. Lots of padding around the heel collar and uh, the tab of the shoe. Uh, it's kind of that pillow style padding is what I often what I like to call it, which means that it rests mainly up towards the top. But I found it to be really comfortable. No hot spots at all. And I did feel like, you know, that padding and with the uh, addition of a fairly stiff, not overly stiff heel counter. It creates a nice heel pocket for my heel to set in. I didn't have any heel slippage either up or down or side to side. You know, I like the heel flare for the comfort, especially going downhill, and it gives you, you know, something to hang on to should you need that to help you get your shoes on. The one downside to having a heel flare on a trail shoe is you can kick up a bit of debris from time to time that might get in, uh, get into your shoe. It wasn't a major concern of mine and it wasn't all that much debris that that get got caught up in there for me uh where it caused any kind of you know real concerns where i might not want to buy the shoe again because of that so nothing like that at all found it to be like i said really comfortable probably if i had my my choice i would go with a more traditional heel counter on these so maybe in the future anyway maybe with the speed goat six um hoka might take a look at that but overall, I found these to be super comfortable to run in. I, you know, I did you know, take these out on a little bit of speed work. My favorite is just plotting along. So you want know, to go out there and, and log a lot of miles. They're super comfortable for that. Um, they don't have a rock plate. So if you're running in some really rocky areas, that's something to keep in mind. But I did find them to be pretty darn stable. You know, they got a pretty wide base uh, back here in the heel all the way up through to the forefoot of the shoe. So it always felt pretty stable. I never felt unsafe when I was out running. And, you know, it did get a little bit slippery. Now, the last time that I had these out was yesterday. I took them out on a long run, uh, again, out at my local state park where I transitioned from the road to the trail. But it was really an unusual day because it, it started out below freezing. So everything was pretty hard and solid, even on, you know, some of the trails that typically would be, you know, a bit mucky. 
And these were super comfortable. But the longer that I was out there, because it was about an hour and 40 minute uh, run. And as the weather started to warm up, the ground did get a little bit greasy. So I did find myself sliding just a little bit here and there on parts of the trail. But I found these to do a super good job. And I don't see any signs of wear. Now, you know, if we take a real close look at the upper, uh, you know, there's no there's no rips or tears. The eyelet chain, of course, it's got that extra plastic around the eyelet. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the laces pulling through at all. They're going to hold up really well. And I didn't see any real signs of wear on the, on the lugs. You know, there's a, some, obviously. Uh, but for the most part... They look pretty new. If I if I were able to clean these up a little better for you, and I did try to knock the mud off and clean them up some for the presentation here today, but uh, obviously I didn't do a fantastic job of that, but that's okay. It kind of gives you an indication of what these are going to look like after you get done running in them. Uh, it does add a little bit of weight as you pick up some of that mud and debris when you're out running, but not so much that you know it's, it caused any kind of problems. And the lugs, for the most part, gave me pretty good grip, especially... Where I noticed that most, I think, was on looser gravel. When I was out on the trails that were more hard packed, that really didn't become an issue at all. But out on the gravel, it did give you a little bit of extra traction when I was out running. So overall, I'm really loving the Hoka Speed Go 5 as a trail shoe. Lots and lots of comfort. And for me, this is a really good choice this time of year. I'm training for the Boston Marathon. So if you guys have any kind of interest in those kind of videos, you know, please subscribe to the channel and join us in, in those conversations. Each week, I summarize the week's worth of workouts. And I just completed week number two. So I'm going into week number three. And of course, the Boston Marathon will be run mid-April. Uh, mid so if you have interest in that kind of thing, please join us over there and add to the conversation. Love to Love to hear from you. Uh, but I'm going to be putting a lot more miles in these, I know, over the next couple of months just because of the weather conditions that I have to run in. And so I need something that's going to keep me safe when I'm out, even running around uh, town on the pavement and on the sidewalks as the snow starts to fly. But I'm going to run as much as I can out on the trails in these. Um, and even though they have 100 miles on them, they've got hundreds more to go. I I expect to get somewhere at least around four, maybe 500 miles in these before I might retire them. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim.